Okay, it's time to start. Okay, um, yeah, first of all, just to introduce a little bit, I also want to highlight, you know, give the, all the credits to Meng and Wu. This is their presentation, they are from IBM China. And unfortunately, they couldn't come because of the visa. And I'm a, a colleague, I'm working at IBM actually in Tokyo, in Japan. Uh, I collaborate a little bit in this work, and I'm a backup speaker. I'm going to present their, their work here. Also, they have a record a demo that I will play later. Um, so the presentation is about uh, a real-world experience uh, of deploying some framework that they develop to uh, uh, help for companies to be more sustainable from what they call in full stack, which from applying you know, optimization for in the, the hardware the infrastructure perspective up to the application. That's what it's the definition of full stack that they will be talking about in this presentation. Okay, so, um, um, yeah. Okay, uh, Meng, she's the CTO of IBM China um, and uh, she's uh, managing the IBM uh, system labs. Um, yeah, Hua, yeah, sorry, the pronunciation. Uh, it's a techno solution architecture that's implementing and working the framework, and most of the demo he will be, uh, um, you know, that will play. He's showing how everything works. And I'm Marcelo Amaral. I'm from IBM uh, Research in Tokyo. Okay, just some quick introduction about the motivations here. So IBM has done some surveys about uh, with some CTOs and CEOs from, uh, in companies around the world. And for example, in 2021, 31% of the CEOs, they were uh, saying that sustainability is something important to be tackled for the next three years. And the new survey now in 2023, 51% of the CEOs are saying that sustainability is something important to be addressed in the companies. Uh, most especially because most recently, you know, especially in Nero, there is some uh, uh, demands from the governments for companies to become more sustainable, especially for AI workloads. So there is this new uh, requirement in Europe that uh, companies that are working with AI workloads, they need to report the energy consumption. So this is one of the motivation that sustainability is becoming important. Um, the other thing is, another perspective is how much energy is being spent in it. So there are some uh, uh, analysis, some predictions that uh, data centers in the world concerns about you know more than 200 and 250 terawatts terawatt hours, which is actually something similar to what the entire country of Australia is consuming. So it's very very big, something important to analyze and take care. Um, yeah. So given that uh, the IBM China with uh, the China government, the, the Ministry of uh, Infrastructure and uh, Industry uh, developed some guidelines how companies can, especially on China, so can apply these guidelines to become more sustainable. And they come up with this idea of the full stack, which means apply things from the infrastructure up to optimizations to the application. And also, it's uh, not only to reduce the energy consumption, but sustainability in a broad, more broader, broader uh, you know, definition means sustainability of the software as, uh, as well. So um, then they have these guidelines. Uh, let's see if I can have a pointer here. Oh. Yeah, see. So they have some guidelines like, uh, you know, to improve the security because it needs to be sustainable, but also needs, to, at the same time, needs to be some technology or some tools that are secure and, uh, and also have some compliance. Uh, you know, stability and reliability of the software and the infrastructure, everything that is being proposed to be uh, sustainable needs to also, uh, you know, uh, yeah comply with uh, different, uh, you know, dimensions here that it's, and also in the end, of course, the technology needs to become green and also low, low carbon emission. Um, there are different phase. Uh, the first, the, the company will need to be complying with the guidelines 
and then apply optimization in their infrastructure and application, and then transform the whole thing to be more sustainable. And in the end, it's, I think the best scenario will be some company that can lead the directions for uh, sustainability. So in this survey that they created, they, taught, they actually interviewed more than 100 uh, companies and trying to define what's the best you know, metrics uh, that can be used for measuring sustainability with something that it's not homogenized it is still like a so open discussion. I think this might be something also for the future, for the open source community, maybe, you know, to create like a, some open standard for sustainability. I think it should be interesting. I understand that there are some agents some, that it's still doing that, but it's, is it still like every company is doing uh, their own definitions for things. So uh, in this was one of the attempts to talk with different companies and try to bring some uh, uh, key metrics and components. Um, and uh, they are using their framework that they are proposing here for this work. Uh, it comes just, you know, very high level is like, uh, you know, power unit uh, efficiency that uh, most of the companies are using for data centers and also performance, up to performance metrics of applications because of course, we need to be more sustainable, but also meets performance requirements for applications. Okay, so this is the overview of the, uh, the implementation of the framework um, that comes from, you know, what they say that level, uh, level zero up to the level uh, four. It comes from, again, as I was mentioning, from the infrastructure perspective, what we can do up to what we can improve in the application. So, and this comes from uh, monitoring. We need to collect metrics, collect data from infrastructure and application. M I enable observability for that, you know, to be easier for users, administrators to look on that, on the, this data, process this data, and then we can manage it better. So, you know, um, become the data center more efficient. We do consolidation, you know, uh, also can can be, uh, right now it's not, a, in this demo it's not that. Uh, actually there is something that we will show in the demo for that. But to do some, uh, some uh, you know, change the power knobs, for example, uh, you know, we can play with uh, varying the CPU frequency, GPU frequency, we can save energy with some techniques, also do some consolidation. If we, we're not going to show the slides that, but just to show an example what we can do concretely to save energy. Uh, if you see the power curve for energy consumption, normally when you are consolidating more workloads, there are more workloads, the, the power consumption, it will be a little bit lower. So it's a good practice, uh, of course, respecting the SLA for performance to try to consolidate applications on the same server so that can be more become the server more energy efficient in the end. Um, so then enable observability, uh, do the analysis and optimization, and also create some automation that I was saying about scheduling and uh, other possible uh, power knobs uh, change that we can improve the energy efficiency of the cluster. Um, here just, uh, you know, uh, highlight example that uh, the demo that they, they are going to show in this uh, presentation and also that this, it's open. So they created this uh, full, the solution that I'm talking about with all the guidelines, all the systems that are uh, connected between each other. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. And they uh, are presenting that for clients in a, and uh, in, in their facility in IBM China. So here, uh, uh, though it's a little bit overwhelming, it's a lot of things, but uh, just to show that uh, it's the software architecture uh, for the solution that they have. Uh, it's, they have sensors connected to the data center, uh, co uh, collecting uh, temperature, uh, power consumption metrics from the data center perspective. Note that this is what, this is interesting because in the regular data center, we have energy consumptions from the node, isn't it? We can get CPU energy consumption, uh, but in the infrastructure level, it's kind of not easy to get that. So for example, what's the energy from the rack? 
uh, what's the energy for the cooling system? This is normally not exposed in the data centers, and uh, they are doing that with special sensors collecting this information, and then expose this to uh, the, infra the cloud infrastructure, the infrastructure perspective, and also uh, for the software engineers, how with just such information can the, how they can improve the the sustainability of applications. Um, yeah, so this is another uh, uh, overview of that. So, uh, but just to show that, again, it's re a little bit related to what I said, but they're collecting information from the infrastructure here, and then they're collecting information from the application itself. And with that, you know, processing this data and using some open source tools, uh, they are creating the solution. And the idea here is to show, uh, you know, a, a product but that ha has dependence of open source, and also with that, they are proposing solu uh, improvements for an open source. For example, we're going to talk later about another project that it's the Kepler project, which is the project that I'm more related to. I will have a uh, presentation about that with more details about the Kepler in two days, but I, I will explain it better later. Okay, so, uh, about their observability, so the, uh, the idea here also is, again, so we have like uh, different levels of uh, data and how to uh, expose that for, uh, you know, the software engineer to the CEO, the, C the CTO. So they will have different uh, interests in different level of metrics. So the idea is show, you know, for the administrator, we have, uh, 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 energy consumption and CO2 emissions from the data center, from the, the, the infrastructure, from the application level, and in a general uh, high level, uh, not high level, detailed uh, uh, graphs, and then something that it will be more general for, you know, CSOs and the soft engineer re uh, reliability uh, people that also want to get this information per application. And the analyst, this is like, uh, you know, the energy consumption from different hardwares. Also, they can include uh, find hotspot, and uh, maybe there's something that's consuming more energy because of some failure or something. So they just should try to find, find the problems and manage them. Okay, this is the Kepler project. This is the one that I'm more, most more involved with to that. Um, the Kepler project was initially created for x86, in, uh, you know, Intel CPUs, and this collaboration with IBM China, it's for IBM Z, the mainframes, uh, that normal banks are using that, uh, also to estimate the power consumption to the process and container levels in the cloud environment, in Kubernetes. Uh, it's possible to run Kepler in standalone only for uh, process, but the main use case it's for you know, on top of Kubernetes and calculate the energy consumption of containers on the cloud. Um, the, this collaboration leveraged Kepler to collect power, power metrics from uh, IBM Z machines and, also, and then break down that power consumption from the machines to the containers. Um, I will give, uh, I have a presentation in two days about Kepler with much more details how everything works. Okay, I'll show the demo. Let's try to maximize. Other primary recording system, including outdoor. Let's give you a quick tour first for a closer look at our data center. The first thing you will notice are the primary cooling system, including outdoor magnetic trailer and the cooling tower for data center cooling. We also have backup air cooled trailer and other equipment to ensure efficient cooling operations. Inside the data center server room, various network cable trays are placed to serve different purposes. This house Ethernet networks for high-speed connections and fiber optic cables for storage area networks 
The layout of hotel containment system greatly addressed the cooling challenges of high-performance computing equipment. This is the backbone of the data center, responsible for routing, switching, and securing all network data. It plays a vital role in ensuring seamless connectivity and safeguarding network security. Now we will share our experience and insights on how to manage and operate the data center using open source software. First, let's introduce Dashi, our go-to navigator for the daily tool we use. Dashi not only helps engineers categorize different tools based on their needs, but also allows for monitoring and virtualization of corresponding metrics. To monitor various types of data center infrastructure and equipment, we utilize the SMP exporter to collect operating metrics across different dimensions, such as environmental, power, and cooling devices. These metrics are then aggregated in Prometheus and Zabbix. In case of problems happens, tools like Uptime Kuma and ChatOps come into play centralizing alert notifications through PagerDuty. By integrating with ITSM platforms and IT enterprise asset management tools like IBM Control Desk, engineers are promptly notified based on severity and alarm rules, allowing for quick issue resolution. Real-time operational metrics from IoT devices are also fed into maximum omnio edge combined with advanced analytics and machine learning capabilities. This enables proactive fault detections and prevent from application and system failures. To simplify the deployment of container management, we often rely on tools like Portainer. Pathmark's virtualization environment is our trusted solution for managing x86 server virtualization environments. Ansible Playbooks automate routine operational tasks such as software installation, service configuration, and problem resolutions. Trunas help us in managing and maintaining the storage devices, volumes, and the file system within the data center. Through various storage protocols like NFS, SMB, and iSCSI, data can be easily shared and accessed. To handle the vast amount of data logs generated in the data center, we rely on the open source tools like ELK and Grafana Loki to efficiently investigate error and warning in the logs. Additionally, we use Grafana Tempo to trace and record the request chains between different services, enabling comprehensive monitoring and management of cross-system request flows. We aggregate different kinds of metrics and logs from IT infrastructure using software like Prometheus and Zabbix. Based on specific requirements, Grafana allows us to create a customer dashboard to analyze the KPIs and monitor the overall business operation status. If we receive alert from our business applications, we immediately use Instana to diagnose the problem and allocate the root cause. Usually, we drill down to diagnose the problem from the entry of the application service. In the application of the ability dashboard, we can find the abnormal service with an alarm. We can conduct the in-depth transaction call at chain analysis and analyze the error log to fix the problem. We also use the application observability dashboard for our website monitoring 
by analyzing actual browser request times and page loading times. It allows detailed insight into the web browsing experience of the users and the deep invisibility into application code passes. We can easily locate the reason of slow access to understand how to continuously improve efficiency. We open the real-time sustainable development indicators, including energy consumption, carbon emission, SLA of all layers of the entire IT operation system. We can easily check the energy efficiency data, which we also call power utilization effectiveness of the current data center and the data of the last year. This is calculated based on the energy consumed by IT equipment and facilities, as well as the total energy consumption of the data center. The data on the current page is displayed and calculated according to the time frame we selected, and the data is constantly refreshed and changed. For example, the real-time carbon emission data and the data changes during this period. The pie chart on the right clearly shows the energy consumption ratio occupied by each component of the current data center. For example, the blue part is the IT systems. The yellow part is the chiller and the cooling tower. The green part is the indoor cooling system and the red part is the backup cooling and the circulating water pump. If we want to learn more about the changes in the energy efficiency of each part, we can see more details related to different platforms and business applications at the bottom of the page. This can greatly help data center operation and maintenance people to understand the current status and the reasons for changes in carbon emissions and energy consumption data, so as to help us make plans to improve utilization efficiency and reduce unnecessary waste of resources. We can also understand real-time energy usage through energy flow analysis to identify possible energy efficiency improvement solutions. AI-based data analysis provides us the current hotspot hardware for energy usage and automatically suggests the job scheduler to suspend scheduling task to that hardware. Spectrum RSF provides a variety of intelligent scheduling strategies to automatically match tiered electricity price. For example, during the time of day when electricity prices are high, the throughput of the cluster is reduced, and some common or low priority jobs are queued. During the time when electricity prices are low, the throughput of the cluster is improved. The amount of the jobs will be queued for execution. In this example, the electricity price is the lowest during the time period from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. We set the maximum number of the operable jobs in the cluster to 96 and set it to a relatively low number in the time of period with higher electricity cost. The current time is 1.30 a.m. According to the intelligent scheduling strategy of ILSF, this cluster is running at a full load, that is 96 jobs are being executed. When the time is 1.20 p.m., the number of jobs can be run by the cluster is 48. Now, let's take a look at the graph of the overall operation of the cluster over the past day. We can see that, according to the intelligent scheduling strategy, the throughput of the cluster matches the tiered electricity price curve, so that the goal of the reducing energy consumption of the cluster will be achieved. We also leverage the resource management tool to find the suggestions for energy saving and reliability improvement. 
Terminomic provides optimization suggestions including delete, resize, move, suspend, provision, and reconfig with no impact to the business applications. This can be applied to different kinds of resources, server storage, virtual machines, application components, and databases. For example, we can shut down the idle physical server to improve the sustainable indicators. Now, let's check back the sustainable monitoring dashboard. The energy efficiency ratio has been improved, and both the energy consumption and carbon emission have also been decreased. And we also use NVD to capture and analyze the electricity and the emission data to check the performance of our work. As you can see, the detailed data on emissions reductions. With more detailed data such as PUE, total electricity, and IT electricity sync with NVIDIA, we can have more insight of our business workload and take more effective actions. Sometimes we need an expert to assist the data center technicians to resolve the problem remotely. Maximo Assist helped reduce the time that it is required to diagnose and repair the equipment problem. For example, with the support of argument reality and AI-powered guidance through a knowledge base of equipment data, the on-site technicians can easily get assistance from the Assist mobile app and successfully diagnose the problem and repair the more function cooling tower which is a very critical facility for data center cooling. In this demo, we are going to show you on IBM Linux One, how could we do the finite-grained power monitoring. The first thing, we deployed our benchmark application RoboShop into the OCP or Kubernetes cluster. And from this dashboard, the first part is about application performance. So we send the concurrent request per second into the environment that is over 300. And meanwhile, we got around the 320 millisecond response time. And as well, we in the last 15 minutes, we sent over 207. 70,000 requests, and uh, within that, we have uh, over 2,000 uh, failures. And uh, we can show the detailed response time and uh, throughput for each endpoint. And in the following sessions, uh, we show the total carbon emission that is uh, calculated by the carbon emission factors. So that well varies based on the different um, part of the world, what is exactly the coefficient about uh, pre-electricity that is, uh, contains uh, the carbon emission. So here, that is, uh, we use uh, United States numbers to distribute that into the coal, petroleum, and the natural gas. So we can understand during the last uh, uh, I mean, per day, right? That is a projected, what is the carbon emission? I'll just stop here. So uh, we have one minute for questions. If you, someone want to ask something. Yeah, sure. How much uh, energy do you use to observe your uh, energy consumption? Right, that's a good question. So. Um, this system, it, actually there is a, a section here that's showing, let's see. Yeah, it's just here, so. Uh, yeah, so this is the, oh, it's, oh, here. So it's the Kepler project, so that it's actually monitoring the energy consumption. So basically the energy consumption is proportional to the resource utilization. See? 
So if we have a tool that it has kind of low overhead, also impacts performance if the resource utilization is too high of the tool, it's also proportional for that. So in the Kepler project, we developed that to be as minimal as possible, the resource utilization. But everything depends on scalability, also the size of the cluster, because it can be more intense, everything. But in this demo here, it's few nodes. It's not like uh, we are testing in 500 nodes and see what's the energy consumption of everything. But we can see here, comparing to the other workloads, the energy consumption of Kepler is much lower. It's like minimal, but uh, it's a good point. So we should do an analysis for years and things like that to see what would be the impact. But also the other systems you use, the sensors and that system, these things, are they all measurable within the standard? I guess that's what you're talking about, the standard for Yeah, systems? it's need to be accountable. Yeah, I'm more involved with the Kepler itself, uh, not to the other parts, but uh, I think this should be also measured. measured to be report, of course. Is it kept below the of the chip? Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry, I forgot to ask the question. So, someone asked me what's the uh, energy consumption of the tool that it's measuring the energy, the, the, the energy consumption of the system, and how it's the, how it's the uh, overhead for that. And I said that Kepler has low overhead because of the resource utilization is low, and the energy consumption also low. Some other uh, ask about if it's applicable to uh, uh, OpenShift. And yeah, so it's for Kubernetes environments, it can be Kubernetes and OpenShift. Uh, yes, because reducing the energy consumption also reduces the, the CO2 emissions, things like that. But it's in the perspective of improve the energy efficiency of data centers and applications. And of course, maybe it has like different power source because it, we have like, you know, oil based, you know, energy, energy that comes, but it can be also, you know, more sustainable power source. And as they were showing, like, uh, you know, scheduling application for a different uh, time in the day that's using different power sources as well. We have uh, this perspective. Yeah, sure. Uh, um, do any schools integrate with uh, OpenTelemetry? Oh, yeah. So uh, someone asked if it's integrated with OpenTelemetry. And right now we are just exporting Prometheus metrics, but uh, the idea is also to connect to OpenTelemetry metrics, yeah. Okay, I'm um, going to close then, I think I'm on time. Thank you very much for the attention and if someone has any other question, please uh, try to reach me or the presenters. And I have like more details presentation two days about Kepler and please, if you have time, join. Thank you. Thank you.